What's happening everybody? Welcome back to the half ass Garage. It's cold out here and today we're going to use the mill to fix this old broken computer case. So let's try it out. I got this uh, Corsair Crystal X570 case. It's totally taken apart right now. But this case here has tempered glass sides, front, top, you know, the side on the other side of that, all on it. And it's a over $200 case. So I got this one as a display model because it's broken. So I got it super, super cheap. And uh, <clears throat> pardon me, cold out here. Uh, the deal was that the customers kept pulling all the sides off. So they'd take the tempered glass off and they'd steal the drive trays out of the cases. So the solution was to super glue the screws right into the case, but customers being customers, busted all the screws off, like right inside of the little bosses there for them, their little standoffs or whatever you call them. So those are the holes that are cut right into the tempered glass before it's tempered, and it sits on there and there's little rubber pads, holds it on. So we need to get these milled out and tapped. So I did buy the correct taps. So that is the tap and it, it came with a drill bit. But what we're going to use to get these to get, well this one's open so you can kind of see that, is this little 7 64th end mill. So I, I ordered that. It fits into the 3 16th collet pretty well. So we are going to use this, set it up in the machine kind of true it up so that I can mill it straight and then we're going to try to get this soft crappy metal that's super glued in it out so I can tap it and then reuse the awesome case. So that's the plan. Let me get this thing all set up and kind of leveled on there and then we'll just uh, kind of drill it out and hope for the best, right? So my plan for this is just to use these little step blocks here. I could use some one, two, three blocks or whatever and just kind of sit the case on there and arrange it in a way and clamp it down so I can get to this. So I'm going to use these flat sides here um, to, to sit on. These tabs kind of flex a little bit, so I'm not going to try to sit it right on the corners. I'm going to use these sides here on my blocks. These blocks are all the same height. so. It'll be nice and flat. Once I clamp it down, we'll be good. So I'm going to arrange all of that, figure out how I can get this right underneath the spindle, and uh, we'll be good to go. So let me uh, figure out how to, how to clamp this thing. All right, so the way that we're going to do this, if you can see in there, these are the T-slot nuts. They drop down into here, slide around into there, and then you can thread in one of those threaded rods there and you put these up on this on the block so kind of give you an idea of how they work these are the clamps so you'd sit that somewhere You've got these little interlocking like teeth so you'd sit that on there sit that on there you've got your t-nut underneath of it then you have one of these so this will screw down into the bed you see there we go screw down into the table and it's held in place under there I guess I can just go ahead and do it it needs to be on the other side but it's hard to get light over there so that'd be there this thing goes on like that your work is here and then once you clamp it down it'll hold it so once you can pull it down you're good to go so that's what we got going down over here I'm going to put a little bit of tape on it to kind of help not mar up that um, that inner lip there on the case. These are pretty smooth, so it's not going to do really too much to it. But you can see that I've got it all set up over there. I've just got to run the nut down on top right here. So stick that down, tighten it. It's a little bit too high. It looks like it might be a little bit too high, but that's fine. It's good. Case isn't going to go anywhere right now, so I'll uh, tighten it a little bit more, and then we'll fit the other ones in the other sides wherever we can. 
kind of just rinse and repeat. So that's the plan for those right now. So I'm going to go finish uh, locking it down and then we'll be back. Alright, so I just got them kind of in there. They're not the best, but they're way good enough to hold it. Barely hand tight. Not going to go anywhere. Nice and solid. Won't move around. So just got it kind of positioned up on these blocks. Got my hold downs on it. Just have to find the center of this. Put my collet in. Move my bed out of the way. Oops. I guess I left it. Left it in gear. Or engaged. So that's the deal with that. Put my collet up in there. Uh, I don't even know where it is. So these right here are the collets. You snap into the ring. Kind of hard to do it with one hand. They snap into place. You thread it up in there. And then these spring collets, when they get pressure on them, they just clamp down on that hole right there. So. 3 8 is what I need for the bit that I've got or the end mill that I have. So then I'm going to have to toy around with figuring out how to center find that. I don't have like a great way to do that, but I'm going to mess around with it and just kind of see. So I'll probably indicate it in once I can get it down low enough to do that. Not really, I'm not the best person to be showing you how to do any of this machining stuff, but, you know, whatever. Alright, I was going to kind of indicate these things in. It's a whole thing that goes on here and spins around, tells you exactly whatever, but this isn't that critical, so I just eyeballed it. I don't know how well this camera will allow you to see that, but looks like it's dead straight from that side. Looks like it's about even from that side, too. Take a couple little pecks down and, and make it fine adjustments depending on what uh, what it looks like. Well, hopefully you can see that. I can't do anything if you can't. It's, too, uh, it's just not a great setup. Anywho, we're going to turn it on and see what happens. doesn't look like the collet has a ton of run out on it. Alright, well. Yeah, those are like aluminum screws. Ah, it's getting a little bit wiggly. Yeah, it does have some run out on it, but it'll be okay. Alright, this locks, you can't see it from there. Let's see how we look. And get you out of here. It's quite the elaborate setup to mount this little camera here. What do you think? Looks pretty good to me, right? Yeah, I think that uh, I think that'll be all right. It's aluminum by the looks of things. So, nope, we're a little bit off. It needs to come this way some. We'll just move the table over. You can see on the DRO, when I move that, it will show up. And then move it a little bit. There. So the more I move it, the more it goes. You can see it there. Man, this thing's kind of tight. So now we've been, we've went back. 
that far. Now we're forward that far. Oops. Now we are creeping up on, well, She's sensitive, fellas. There. Now we're right on the money where we were before. So we're just going to swing over. Maybe. Yeah. Oops. More than I wanted. There we go. 25. Let's see how it looks. Throw the brake off. Look about right. Let's eyeball it up. Looks like it might work. Alright. So we're over just a tad. Yeah, works out good. I might do it. Might bump it over to 30. Oops. My DRO's freaking out. Or my uh, VFD, rather. It does that sometimes. I'm not exactly sure why, but it just does one of those, one of those things. Turned up the tab. I don't know why it does that. It starts getting squirrely. Yeah, well. Now well, it's freaking out. So we're going to have to wait for a minute while it settles down. And uh, I don't know what a lot of these things mean. Ock. Um, not entirely sure. So it was all the way down. This has been one of those kind of deals that it's always sort of done that since I got it. The previous owner said that uh, never did anything weird on him. So probably can see a little bit better now. God, it's tight in here. So what we do, stop and reset. Just hit run. Now that's the way it's supposed to go. That's the Hertz. So in America, the electricity coming into your house, so everything is at 60 Hertz. So this will allow me to change the frequency up to 60 Hertz. So see how it's not working again? It's, it's stuck. So we'll shut it off. <laughs> now it's just stuck on. There we go. OL2. I don't know what that means. Overload. Not entirely sure. I'll have to take this apart and see. So now it works again. Weird, isn't it? See it getting jiggly? Huh. Strange. Maybe the VFD's dying. I'll just run it for a little bit. I'll just let it kind of go. Kind of warm everything all up. Getting weird again. Yeah. Anyway, we'll figure it out as we go along.
We don't have to go very fast on it because it's just really soft metal. Yeah, this thing is all wonky and wobbly. Probably the, the cheapest, a combination of super cheap collets with uh, super cheap end mill. We'll hold it there for a minute and see if it kind of works its way out. Yeah. Probably some run out. Anyway, we're getting down there. Running at 22 and a half hertz. See all that dust that came out? I think we're getting to the end of the um, of the super glue. There we go, we broke through. So we're through this tab now into basically air between that and this. So we're good. I lock out my spindle. Now, oops, then we're good. So we should be all straight on that. Looks good. And then we'll just remember we're at, you know, on that. If, uh, if I need to set up and make changes, then I can remember where I'm at for right now. So if I needed to move over right now to clean up a shoulder or something, I know that that is, you know, my spot to go back to for right now. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter because we're done. So we're going to move on to this one. So I'll just rotate it, do the whole, do the same thing. And then once I get it all done, we'll tap these out and we'll see if any of the screws fit. So I've got some screws here that came out of the case. They hold the feet on. So we'll try and see if, um, how it all goes. Be back in a minute. Here's something that you might want to check out when I'm milling down into it. You can see the previous threads, so that's nice. So it means we're getting a good cleanup. I just eyeballed it, uh, but we're through. Had to support it with a little block behind it, a step block. We are done. Sweet. So, there we go. 
Oops, well that one's gone. There we are. Still see some of the threads. So I'm gonna blow this all out real good. Oops. Yeah, it was kind of tricky to, to get that thing um, secured down there. I got one on the back. I guess this one really wasn't doing much. But uh, yeah, so still good, good enough. Now we'll just tap it out. Okay, so here we are. Everything's all set. Pulled the tap out of the package. This is the correct size drill bit if you were drilling through something, but you know I needed to break those those rough edges on there. So unfortunately, I don't have nice uh, tap you know holders, tap handles. So this is the best one I've got, and the smallest size is like just big enough. So all the way tight is essentially you know that's it. So if we got these pretty much right on the money. So I'll take you down there and show you. I don't know how well you can see. I'm try to let you see. There's really no more light. But uh, yeah, we've got the threads pretty much right on it. So you can see all the threads, you know, right there. So we were on center really good. I'm not sure if the camera's blurry or not. But uh, yeah, got it directly on center and cleaned it up really nice. So the tap should just about slide right in it because it looks like the end mill just pulled whatever those other screws threads are right out of it. So see if I can do this without breaking it. It's kind of big for what we're doing but yeah we're not through yet but we're getting close feels really good it's not binding up or anything I don't know maybe it doesn't go through not, I'm not sure. We're pretty deep. We're pretty through. Pretty far down there. Can't even talk to this. So, yeah. I mean, how far down were we? That's pretty far. It's farther than any screw will go. And let's see. We've got these case screws here. These are the ones that came out of the bottom. Here's a, a typical case screw. You know, they're the same. I don't have any of the thumb wheel, the thumb, the toolless screws out here. So, screw that on down. She's good. I don't have a. Where's it at? There we go. Yep. So nice. Good to go. Might be a little bit on the loose side, but. There's nothing I can really do about that. I'm sort of at the mercy of what the tap is. Look at that. It's all wiggly. I hate that. So this thing is kind of on the edge of breaking just because of the weight. Or at least it feels like it is. to do this with one hand but yeah spinning in nice Look at that perfect yeah we're through I can feel it I don't know if you can see it but we're way through on that and good to go so there we go. Once again, that one works. I don't even know. We might be able to just spin it in on its own. That one, this one might be too short. Let's see. Yeah, pretty much. Seems like it cleaned up the, uh, the threads 
good enough that you could just use the the other screws now the ones that go through here you have to remember that the glass is like that thick so um, it has longer screws the screws that go go to this thing are about that long roughly like like in there so they're pretty pretty long and forgiving and they go all the way through so we don't have any any problems with that we don't have to worry about it it's just gonna go down in there catch whatever good threads are left at the bottom and basically that is it so that is fixing a $200 case out here saving a couple of bucks getting to use the sweet mill so pretty happy about that I'll just finish tapping these things out and pretty much it's done just go up there and find some screws that are long enough to work or contact Corsair and see if they'll sell me a package of the um, of the correct screws because like I said they're longer there's also some standoffs that are broken on this so I have to 3d print some standoffs there's some that go up in here uh, I already did it for some of them but I'll have to do it again and then that's pretty much it so Thanks a lot for hanging out. It's a short little kind of off topic uh, video, but I've wanted to fix this case for months and months and months, but I just didn't have the correct tools. And I knew that if I was trying to drill through this thing, I would end up just making it unusable and ruining all of those provisions for the screws. So that's it. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this little kind of off the wall thing, but thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you dug it, you know, if not, I'm sorry. Try to do better next time. Take it easy. Bye.